Well, ladies and gentlemen, I really don't know if this right here is something to laugh at or something to get upset about or really and truly what it is. But seeing how it is that we had this story out of Chicago where migrants are suddenly electing to use the money that's been given to them by the taxpayer to buy their own food because the food that's being made for them, these culturally appropriate <laughs> meals, which, by the way, are fixed in the most part uh, by the Wokes because the Wokes are the ones who were saying that these meals have to be culturally appropriate, are being rejected. This one right here is kind of an odd story, but if you guys remember correctly, we did do a video a while back talking about the same issue in New York City. And, of course, I brought up the whole, let's just say, the whole... Uh, buzz that was going on last year where uh, migrants were throwing away food, food that was given them inside the hotels they were staying in, the hotels that they were staying in for free, which of course means that we were paying for it, the taxpayer. And of course, they were tossing that food. And of course, the city of New York was beginning to get concerned about the homeless not getting food. However, something about this situation right here to me feels a little bit different. So let's go ahead and dig into this. Now, before we get started, I want you to know right now that if I have to post this video and put headers over parts of it, it's because it's WGN and they are notorious for copyright claims. But of course, they were like the only organization, only news organization that was actually covering this. But of course, we've got to also go back in time to get some further context on this situation. With that right there being said, here you guys go. Let's go ahead and dive in. Afternoon in migrant shelters other than measles, the condition of the food at many of the facilities. Yeah, some migrants are now buying their own meals, even as the city spends millions to feed them. Laura Duarte has been looking into that, and she has tonight's WGN Investigates. Laura. Something you will notice really quick is that, number one, the clips themselves will be broken up a little bit smaller because it is WGN. And like I said before, the copyright claims from this company are pretty daggone bad. But then again, though, maybe they've got different sections that, that do this because News Nation has never bugged me before, but WGN News, they have. But still, though, I'm just giving you guys a bit of a heads up that the clips are going to be a little bit shorter. Now, the problem with the migrant crisis is not only the whole replacement aspect of replacing certain groups that we've talked about here. And of course, you can't really talk that much about that in detail, at least as far as the YouTube algorithm is concerned. But of course, I've brought the fact that one particular minority has been jealous of the other one because one minority is getting more benefits than the other one. And the other minority thinks that they should get those benefits. It's absolutely crazy, absolutely insane. But still to go on top of this, though, what a lot of people are taking note of of this particular situation is that the free food that's being given to said migrants, let's just say that the migrants aren't exactly happy with the food that they're getting. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, that right there is kind of screwed up. People give these people free food. And of course, these people absolutely reject the free food. They reject the charity that people are showing them. However, when you actually boil it down and actually look at the situation, you're starting to see that this food is actually being made by the same people who claim that uh, they're culturally more engaged than what you are, the outsider, or you who has to work and deal with said situation. Basically, it's the smug woke types. And of course, I talked about this in the previous video that I did yesterday, which I'll leave in the description box, about the Tyson food situation, where it is, of course, we have to bring up the topic of uh, Kelly Osborne saying, who the hell will clean your toilet? Because this is really and truly how the wokes and the leftist elites really and truly feel about the migrants. Basically, the truth be told is, the migrants, in a way, are kind of getting screwed too, but yet, at the same time, they're also getting the benefits from the taxpayer, and the American people are getting screwed as well. I kind of explained that more so towards the end of yesterday's video. I don't think I'm going to have to rehash that now, but I'll just leave it in the description box. Let's look at some more of this. The city has three priorities when it comes to me meals at these migrant shelters, make them high quality, culturally relevant, and nutritious. Well, city approved vendors are meeting those food standards, but residents are not happy and have come up with their own solution to fix the food. Outside the largest migrant shelter in the city, lunchtime has become a business. Watch as a car delivering Venezuelan soup rolls up. They aren't donations. Or so it looks like the migrants who are living in this area are beginning to get a little bit creative. They're starting to say to themselves, you know what, we really and truly don't like the food that's being given to us. So we're going to just go ahead and kind of cook our own thing, kind of set up our own operation. And of course, some people are looking at this and they quite frankly don't know what to think of it, myself included. 
It is fun to watch these wokes get rejected when they provide food that is not exactly, how do I say, edible, which you're going to see right here in a second. But then again, at the same time, it's also kind of a tough sell because you got people who are providing, uh, let's just say, taking time out of the day to cook for these people. By the way, a lot of these people did, in fact, vote for this nonsense. But still, at the same time, it's really kind of a very odd situation where we're kind of looking at this and we're kind of trying to pick sides saying, well, what is actually more hilarious here? The fact that the migrants are rejecting the food that's coming from the wokes or the fact that they're rejecting food that comes from charities. Don't worry, I'll have the better answer for you guys a little bit later on the video because, like I said before, we're going to have to go back in time to kind of take a look at this entire situation, but let's keep going. Business is run by former shelter residents who saw need as complaints about free meals came up. Horrible, horrible, que a veces la dan picante, con picante. ¿Cómo se ocurre de darle una comida a los niños así? New arrivals are choosing to use their own money to pay for food, even as the city signs multi-million dollar contracts with two different businesses to feed them. Seven Communities Meal Service has already been paid $3.7 million to feed migrants, but could stand to make as much as $45 million. A second company, 14 Parish, has received $3.8 million, according to city records, with the potential to make more than $57 million. The residents who are choosing to skip the free food and eat outside gave us images of the city-provided meals, saying they may look fine but taste terrible. This isn't the first time complaints are made. The city even switched vendors earlier this year, hoping to address the issues, but trouble has come. The city sent us this statement, saying it collects feedback from residents on food service, adding the city seeks to work with our food service provider partners to continually improve food options for residents based on the feedback we receive. And we did contact the food vendor for that Pilsen shelter, 14 Parish. They tell us that they are meeting all the nutritional requirements in that city contract. Meanwhile, the story also brings up some questions about how much food is provided at shelters. There is no mandate in place, but it is part of the city's effort to meet the basic needs of new arrivals. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Before I go any further. You're probably thinking right now that this right here is a bit of a, uh, you're probably a little bit confused about the video. You're probably thinking to yourself, dude, are you trying to have fun with us? Are you trying to screw with us? No, no, I'm just simply trying to lead you through a process before we get to the overall end game or the overall end of the video because you guys know me. You know exactly how I feel. You know how I feel that obviously the border needs to be closed. Not only does the border need to be closed, but obviously to go on top of this, when somebody puts in a good amount of effort to get you something to eat, I think you should at least respect them and eat the food or if possible maybe give the food away to somebody who may need the food if you're not going to eat it you know just waste food like this and there's not what you're supposed to and while it is hilarious to see wokes get absolutely rejected which makes me think that uh the hispanics are obviously going to reject the woke when they've got to be around them. because remember it's the wokes who are going to use them in their worldview to clean their toilets and do all the dirty jobs I mean, I just figured I'd point that out. All that food gone to waste, man. It makes you just wonder exactly what the whole purpose of this entire thing is. I mean, you open the border, you let the people in. They're in here basically on a rug. And, of course, the minute they get over here, your your next thing. And may, maybe they know this. May, maybe they know that when they come over here, they're getting a job where... Then again, at the same time, though, they may appreciate the amount of money that they get per hour. They may appreciate it more, but still, though, that money needs to be going into the U.S. economy and not back to their families back east. But still, at the same time, though, it just makes you wonder. It just makes you wonder what the whole purpose of this is outside of re replacing a, a whole other race. Not the W's, but the B's. Just, 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 just think about that. And they just told you, point blank, that your food sucks. But not only do the wokes not know what the hell these people eat, but apparently they also suck at cooking it. Kind of rich if you ask me. I really love how that girl just said that the food is just uh, just not very good. Of course, there's another little line coming up here in a second where she says that the food is too spicy for my kids. Well, what I'm going to say to you is this here. When people automatically assume that Hispanics just eat spicy food all the time, and of course, I used to fall in the same trope because there's one thing I do talk about on this channel. I talk about the types of stereotypes 
the doing fact exists and where they actually came from. I've talked about this before in previous videos. You just have to, you know, when you go through the actual channel, you'll see me bring up where this mirror came from and why is the people automatically going to do this. But the thing that you got to understand is that a lot of people just automatically associate uh, Venezuelans or Puerto Ricans with those who are from Mexico. Not exactly a good thing to do, given the fact that if you actually speak to somebody who's Mexican, they will let you know right away that they're Mexican, whereas if you speak to someone who's Cuban, they will let you know that they're Cuban. Yes, Hispanic is a term to describe an ethnicity. However, when you actually get to nationality itself, uh, you obviously have differences between Mexicans, El Salvadorians, Nicaraguans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The fact of the matter is, is that the people who live in this area, the people who wanted this, the people who claim that they're providing the meals, they automatically assume that these people like one certain type of food, and therefore now the people are in fact rejecting it. Now, like I said before, the correct answer to this situation will be coming up here shortly. But still, it's kind of good in a way to see these people putting the taxpayer dollars into the U.S. system, meaning that they obviously had to buy these products to make the food that they're making. They obviously had to buy in a U.S. store. But still at the same time, that obviously does not excuse the fact that these people are still sending money back home to their native countries, not putting money into the economy when obviously they need to be putting money in the economy. As I've said before, a border wall could have fixed this entire situation and the border does in fact need to be closed. But still though, I do think it is absolutely hilarious to see that these wokes who are bringing these food obviously... Uh, messed up providing the service that they are to the people that they claim they want so bad. And of course, the people for the most part are rejecting them in a way, and it's always fun to see. But then again, though, like I said, that's not entirely the right answer here. Now, speaking of not entirely the right answer, let's go back in time because obviously these are not the only people providing meals to the city of Chicago or not the only people in the city of Chicago who are providing meals to the migrants. There are also people who provide meals to the homeless. There are also other people who do cook food that is obviously much, much more well received by migrants and people in the overall area who live there or the people who are being sent there. And this also includes the homeless and those right there who are obviously less fortunate. Let's go back in time. Cronus on the near north side where a local nonprofit is going the distance to make sure that migrant families don't go hungry. In a foreign city, something as simple as a hot meal can make you feel at home. ShyCare, a volunteer-based nonprofit that provides food and other resources to Chicagoans who may otherwise be overlooked, is serving meals and sharing hope with new arrivals. We're mixing it up so that they have a variety of meals from our local businesses. Chef Faraz Sadaria, the organization's culinary director and the owner of Tandor Char House, says they are working with 16 restaurants across the city, delivering meals to migrant shelters and police stations, including Chicago Police District 18. The root of all of this is to help and see them smile and have a great meal. In recent months, their efforts have ramped up. And since July, ShyCare, in partnership with the Greater Chicago Food Depository, Thank you, well. Thank you. has provided more than 470,000 meals to migrants, all while continuing to support the city's unhoused population, too. It's, it's, it's a blessing, I think, uh, that we can help out people. And we've grown to a... Uh, to be a great organization, built a great team. Shows what's possible in Chicago, and it reinforces our belief that you don't have to choose between serving someone who arrived yesterday and someone In this who's situation, late. they seem to be a little bit more appreciative of the food. Maybe it was the weather, maybe that is what it was. And of course, I'm the kind of guy who says, you know what, I'm all about charity if done in the right ways. However, obviously this situation that we're dealing with now is in fact a crisis. And of course, as I've told you guys before, What's really and truly going on is that one subset group of people is, in fact, getting replaced. It ain't me. Conservatives and whites have kids at a much, much higher rate. It's that high abortion rate that exists in another community, which is also followed up by an extremely high murder rate, which, by the way, is also followed up by an extremely high poverty rate, which is also at the exact same time followed up by a high disease rate, also including a high STD rate. As I've said before, obviously those who are in the big cities, those who obviously run the very, very big blue areas, the very, very big blue states, they obviously need more voters. So that right there is actually what's happening. That right there is what's been going on this entire time. That's why the border crisis exists. But something else, too, and I mentioned this earlier, is that the right take would, in fact, come up. 
And of course, the right take exists. And of course, it exists in the sense that we dealt with this issue in New York as well. We dealt with it back right before Christmas. Let's go back in time. Town Manhattan. Now a public shelter for migrants. We uncovered potentially dangerous conditions there. Yeah, and now we've uncovered a massive waste of food paid for by the public, as one would expect from a sanctuary city like New York. So how is this happening? We're talking bags of food tossed into the garbage. This in a city where lots of people could use that food. Here's seven on your side, investigative reporter Kristen Thorne. This is insane. This is fresh. This is good food. This is bags and bags of food being thrown away. Workers at the Rowe Hotel in Midtown say it's a nearly everyday occurrence. We throw away food that is perfectly fine. The 1,300-room hotel is being used exclusively as a shelter for migrants, some of whom are seeking asylum. This is completely sad. Granted, this right here is an old video. Of course, it's uh, the migrants who were staying in the hotel, the very, very nice upscale hotel that was being paid for by the taxpayer, which of course the migrants were told this area was free. And of course they could just stay there. But the point is this right here. The issue that we were dealing with at that point in time was that migrants were taking food that was being cooked by private organizations, mostly charitable. Of course, these were also the top 1%, the people that the left oftentimes don't tell you about because they had this whole anti-rich narrative that they have going on, even though the top 1% provides the vast majority of charity and charitable contributions in this country, what do they do? They get together, they pay some people, people make food, they do it, obviously, they say in a non-profit, some people get paid, some people don't get paid, and of course the food goes to these migrants, whether they're for these migrants or not, and what do the migrants do? They get pissed off and they throw the food away. Now, me personally, I believe that the homeless are obviously a problem in these very, very large cities, the homeless situation is definitely a problem. But still at the same time, though, you don't want these people just to go around and not have anything to eat. So if you're not going to eat the food and you're you're going to waste somebody else's time and waste somebody else's time and effort, maybe what you should do is just give the food to the homeless, which is something that, quite frankly, we did not hear about with the situation in Chicago because obviously the migrants are just simply rejecting the food outright which I do think is kind of funny in a way because the wokes act like they know more about the Hispanic populations or the people of certain nationalities that are coming over than the regular person, including the Hispanics themselves, actually know themselves, meaning that they obviously know what it is that they want to eat more than the wokes do. I do think it's funny to see the Hispanics, of course, the Venezuelans, the Nicaraguans, the Cubans, them completely, which I don't really see any Cubans there, but still at the same time, I think it's absolutely hilarious to see these people completely reject food coming from the wokes because obviously the wokes don't know what the hell they're doing. I mean, they automatically assume that these people just wanted spicy food. That's not always the case. I've met a lot of people, people from Mexico and people who obviously Hispanics I serve with, People have roots who back to Colombia, Puerto Ricans, who say that spicy food is just a good old-fashioned stereotype that is used on pretty much every single Hispanic, when in reality, not all Hispanics like spicy food. But let's continue. Waste. We wasted a lot of food. We got homeless in New York City. Felipe Rodriguez works in the housekeeping department at the hotel and told us about the food being thrown out. Bagels is just going to waste. He says this is the delivery the city makes to the hotel every day, three times a day for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Fruit, water and sandwiches are also available on every floor. Rodriguez says workers have spoken with hotel management about the amount of food being thrown out. We have complained rigorously about want to be identified, says she throws out food all the time. Boxes, boxes of apples, boxes of uh, bananas. They throw out the sandwiches as well. We ask the city repeatedly how much it spends every day supplying food to migrants at the row. They didn't get back to us with an answer, but said the food is prepared fresh in the city every day and reflects the diets of the residents at the hotel. A city spokesperson said in a statement, we cannot and would not ever force clients to finish food they had taken Taken, but we do donate leftover food when possible. The city says some of the food is discarded, but they didn't say how much and how much the waste is costing taxpayers. If you know you're throwing away so much food, why won't the city say, let's have accountability, let's shorten down the rations, and let's throw less food away? Okay, now you guys obviously saw that. Now go back and think about what we talked about at the very beginning of the video. It is funny to see the wokes who think they know more than the average person on the street get completely rejected. It is kind of hilarious to see that. 
But still at the same time, though, there are also other charitable organizations that have been working, and I mean they've been working tireless to ensure that these people get fed. These are people, by the way, that I don't think should be here. Not because they're uh, who they are. It's because they're not coming through here the right way. As I mentioned in my Tyson Foods video, a lot of these people are hopping the line. And a lot of Hispanics who've been here for a very long time, who, by the way, are still waiting on their citizenship to come through, uh, they're being skipped over in favor of a bunch of people who've been promised a bunch of free stuff on the taxpayer's dime. Now, Grant, this fair has been going on for a relatively long period of time. They've been bringing over workers for a while, you know, H-2A, all that type of stuff there. And, of course, also people on work visas. But typically, they tend to get sent back home. It's a bad system, and quite frankly, it needs to be fixed. It needs to be cleaned up. These jobs need to be going to Americans, but I do got to go ahead and tell you something else, too. There are some Americans out there who don't want to work those jobs, and I understand that, but still, a lot of these jobs, like factory jobs, are quite frankly starter jobs, and they need to be open for Americans. They also need to be open for uh, those who've been here for a very long time, who apply for citizenship, those who do it the right way, to also get a, a job as well. If you watch my Tyson Foods video, you'll definitely see it about midway where it is that one particular group of workers, Hispanics, by the way, from El Salvador, got completely passed over. They got laid off, yet they've been here and they've done things the right way. And they're being laid off in favor of a bunch of people who just came across the border. You're getting free food. Not only are you getting free food, you are being allowed to stay here free on the taxpayer's dime. You're getting put in hotels for free, nice hotels for free. You're being given facilities for free. People make you food, free food, and you reject it. And even though it's kind of funny to see you guys reject the wokes, which tells me that it's very possible that they will reject the wokes if by some odd chance they end up staying here, still at the same time, it's still kind of jacked up that people got you free food and you rejected it. Just figure I'd point that out. You're here on the taxpayer's dime, and quite frankly, you're not supposed to be here. Border wall would fix all this. The president needs to close the border, and God knows the amount of chaos that's going to come as a result of all of this. It's just one more headache that we're having to deal with during this whole micro crisis. I just figured I'd point that out. With that right there being said, guys, make sure you guys please leave a comment in the comment section. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share the video. Please sign off in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs>